Guys, welcome back. And this video, I promise, is gonna be my most exciting one yet. We're gonna be talking about seaming carpet. Woo! All right, so we're, uh, we're on a job. We've got, it's a master closet, master bedroom here. And I've got a three piece seam, one, two, three here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna seam this thing up. And uh, most of this video, I'm gonna talk to you about um, how I put a seam together and then just some things that can hopefully help you out too when, when using a conventional seam iron. First thing we're gonna talk about is seams need to be seen, sealed. And my favorite sealer, my go-to for almost everything that I do is uh, a thermoplastic sealer, AKA hot melt, uh, hot glue. And um, I've, I've been using this Trax one for a while, but uh, the big important thing on this is the tip that's on here. And that, my friends, is what, uh, what you want so you can slide on the bottom of the carpet and push the adhesive into the backing. So here's uh, one side of my cross seam, and I don't know Chris can, how well you can kind of, we'll just kind of focus on the cross seam. But when cutting a cross seam, you're gonna get stuff like this. This is real, this is a, I think it's like a 70 some ounce piece of carpet. So it's gonna be, it's as dense. You're gonna do the best you can to keep that fiber straight up and down, not sheared. And so again, Chris, I'll have you kind of just come in here and just show me, you'll see it kind of coming out the tip a little bit. And I'm just pushing that forward onto the backing. I'll reset. Now when, when you're like me and you're doing this on top of a piece of carpet, it's very important. Do not let go of this piece of carpet and let it go down on your fibers. It will stick to it. Um, it's one of those, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I probably should have my seam board underneath here. I didn't think of that before I put it on, but I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get this side done. Now I'll kind of show you what I do. You know, I'll, I'll make sure. I really don't want to get any fibers into that adhesive if I can, if I can help it. By all means, I have before and I will again. So we've got that side seal. So what I'll do, just kind of flop it over and I just you know the, the, the yarn's high enough it's holding that backing off the floor not gonna hurt something now when you're doing a cross seam it's it's you know you're you've got the, 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 the carpet nap right you've got the carpet going a certain direction so on one piece it's always gonna be a little easier to seal because the naps gonna be going away from you and that's the piece that I'm on right here same thing just gonna come in here, make sure that my nap is all out of that seam. I'm gonna put my sealer on my uh, glue gun, that edge on there. I'm just gonna push out slow. And if you've never done this, just buy it, get it, take it home, warehouse, cut seams, and just practice with it. Um, it is something that takes practice. There we go. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about seaming. All right. We're back to the seaming. So uh, real world here, right? Like ideally, I would love to have a hard, flat surface to put this on, but that's not going to happen. I've got a piece of carpet already rolled out in here, and I'm going to be working to make my, my fill piece on top of that piece of carpet. So anybody that does this, you get your cushion, your carpet, and then your fill piece, you've got three layers and boy, you got a lot of movement. And the one thing that can really be just an absolute pain in the butt when putting a seam together is that movement. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. I have always liked to work in front of the seam and pull the iron to me. But sometimes when I get these pieces set, I actually like to stay off of them for a little bit before I, you know, maybe just jump around and get to the other side to start putting the seam together. So I have everything set here, ready to go. Uh, I've got my seam tape. I'm using Oricon XU90. And if you notice here, that seam tape does not go all the way to the edge. And the reason is, is because I've got to run seam tape, the length of the seam, and I want, I want to be able to stick to it. So 
I always leave it back about an inch. You know, probably should be a little bit more than that. And I'm sure I get some overlap on my seam, but you know, if that's the weak link on my seam and it all falls apart, I'm guessing I've got some problems somewhere else along the lines too, so. I set my iron uh, because I use the seamer down now. I, I, I have found that I do need to run my seam iron kind of warm. Uh, I, it's, it's right at three, yeah, just a little over, but it, it should be, it's usually right at three is what I run for this seam tape. And then I like to take a wooden weight behind it. And I really mean that, a wooden weight. And then behind that, I'll run my seamer down now. And the reason I like to use this directly behind my seam iron is it keeps it down into that glue and it's allowing my thermoplastic adhesive on my seam to reactivate, heat up, and weld the seam together. Um, sometimes what's happened in the past to me is I've used the seamer down now. My thermoplastic has not reactivated and it cools the seam in a, so quick that, that it doesn't weld together. So um, another thing, the seam rollers that I'll be using, I use either a smooth roller or a paddled roller. I have become more liking the paddle smooth type roller. And this is something you're only gonna see guys on either low nap carpet or if you flip your carpet over after you put the seam together. But when I would have my, my seam board, smooth roller, and I'd be going to roll the adhesive, sometimes I'm, I, I'm probably pushing too hard. And what it does is it pushes that adhesive forward or backwards and it creates that like, like ball of adhesive or just a, a direct line of adhesive. Now, if you're using like a real low nap carpet, you will see that in the carpet. You'll see these like everywhere the seam iron stop, it looks like there's like it's like a puddle of uh, seam, uh, or, uh, thermo, uh, the seam tape, the thermoplastic adhesive on the seam tape. And so I found with this paddle roller with the space in between there, it's not having that constant pressure on that seam. So let's go ahead and burn a seam. So like I said, I like to maybe stay behind the seam, get my drop my seam and iron in there. Always got my heat kicker ready just in case. I gotta move that piece around. And it all goes by feel, right? So like if you're working a snaky piece of carpet, turn your iron down. You know, if you got it, you can't move it as quick. Um, I'm anticipating I'll be moving this fairly quick on here. I'll just have you stay over there, Chris, so you're not stepping on any, any of the carpet. Push that in, and all I'm gonna do is just roll, roll that in. And I'm gonna move my seaming iron again, forward a little bit. You zoom like hold up over and just kind of show that going in. And you just see that that's going together nice and tight. Put that in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that or put that right there. I'm gonna put my seam down now right there. And I'm just gonna do a little walk. Here. Always kind of cautious when you're coming onto that seam. Work my iron forward. So the seam, when you're putting it together, the big thing is, is make sure them yarns are up, right? You just don't want those yarns getting into that, that adhesive because what will happen is when you go to vacuum or you go to sweep across the seam, you're going to see that mark. You're going to see where some yarn is tucked that's going to the butt crack. So it's going to get kind of loud here. <laughs>
do need to show you something right here. See that string? You're gonna be so tempted to pull that out. Leave it alone. Wait till that seam cools and you can get it after the fact. there's a lot of work involved in putting the seam together, right? Is I run my tape past, so I don't even have to worry about scooping up an iron while I'm putting that seam together. I can get this all put together. I can move it around. I really don't care if I'm burning uh, that glue because I really just care about that seam looking good. So I can scoop that off. I'm gonna throw me that piece of parts right there, Chris. Ideally, you want to do this every time. You want to get your glue off your iron. Look at there. Does it look like I do that every time? <laughs> Probably not. All right, guys. We're going to move this forward, turn it on. I'm going to let this cool. We're going to get my other cross seam put together, and we'll just work on our main seam here. Stay tuned. Hey, so this is what I was talking about earlier when I said you got to be careful not to get that sealer on the yarn. Well, I, it's exactly what I did right there. Now, sometimes you're, you're better off just leaving that alone. That's just going to make a mess in my seam. So I'm just going to snip him out of there, get him out of there, and then uh, go ahead with the seam construction. Oh, it's coated. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, we're back, and this is exciting. This is We're having fun now. So we've got our... Three piece seam over there, all put together. Uh, we got it in place, we got both sides cut, we got our edges sealed. Now it's time to make some magic. Let's put this thing together. So, if I was working on, I got Chris here, but if I was by myself, what I would do is I'd actually put my seam iron and tray on the side that I want to finish. Uh, and the reason is that I take that seam iron out of there. I'm gonna take it down there and show you here in a little bit. Put it in there, start, and when I finish, everything's down here. Come over here, Chris. Let's just show them this quick. First thing, you guys are in for a treat. We've got a lot of wonkiness going on in this uh, this piece, and I knew it. Um, another good reason not to cut your fill, probably from the end of the roll of carpet, was just this. At the end of the roll, you could see where it was rolled up and stretched. And when I went to run my rows, they'd go, they'd snake in, they'd come out. Now, you know, I probably could have got by with uh, straight edging that and even though I would have had some colors kind of crossing this is a light color I think I'd be okay but you know what hey we always strive to do the best job we can and truthfully <clears throat> I've done this long enough uh, by no means am I an expert or a master but I enjoy a good challenge so um, we've got a piece of quarter inch birch underlayment cut down there we've got our XU90 work on XU90 through there and that's how I that's my seam board, guys. I just run it, run it like that. And I'll show you here in a little bit how I pull that along. But it's it's probably four feet. I'm not really sure. Just scrap. I make a lot of those because uh, I don't know if you guys do it or not. But a lot of time I'll have two or three seam boards in my van. But then I'll be working on a project where I need a piece of plywood to either build a ramp or a shim or just something. So, all right. So I'm going to come down here. I got my cord all plugged in. I got my 72 miles of extension cord plus seam iron cord and everything. I'm gonna go ahead, swoop up. I'm gonna make sure I ain't got no glue. That's why it's important to clean this thing, guys, is because you don't wanna walk across your floor and have a uh, drippity drip, drip, drip. Look at that, that just about turned out to be an ant. A bad deal too. Go in here, just set her down, and let her do a little cooking. I'm gonna get everything ready. A responsible installer, I had everything down here. You able? To, you see pretty good there, Chris? I'm good. So 
I'll probably have Chris at some point come over here and just kind of show you me moving the carpet around. It's not a big deal, especially with the seam, seamer down now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's just make it happen. All right, here we go. Rock and roll. It doesn't matter how far you want to come out or how much you want to put it in time. It really don't. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I've always just said, you know, just do what do do whatever do whatever's comfortable. There's no uh, wrong way to really start and stop this. You know, I suppose if you put the seam, you're putting the seam together and walk away from it. Let it sit for a while. That might not turn out so well for you. So I can tell this is where I'm going to start. Things are going to start uh, moving on me. So I'm actually going to use, because I'm using a conventional iron, I want to keep moving. I'm actually going to use my seamer down now, and I'm going to move this carpet around. That is going to keep my piece from opening up or overlapping. No promises. Should keep my teeth from opening up or overlapping.
Now, unfortunately, to get to here, you're going to have to do... You're going to have to pull it out. No big deal. So I'll just set that steam pick right on top. I'll pull it out of there right on top like that. I always like to cut that. Cut that off at the wall, that way that pipe can work easily. Now I'm next to each other, excuse me, not on top of each other. Now I'd be glad if they're on top. Of on top of each other going back, that look very good. And this is, these are, you know, the start and the stop of your seam are, are kind of the hardest and weakest parts of the seam. Just, I think it's just the nature of how we make them, how they're put together, how they're constructed. You know, they're just a little bit harder to do. And this is where the, um, the cool glide, you know. In my opinion, guys, if, if, if you're training someone to put some, uh, to be a nice star, I don't know that I train them on a conventional line anymore. So let's let this cool and look it over. We're done, almost. We're gonna show you what uh, what this all looks like here. So Chris, come on in here. I wanted to show this guys to you. When I talked about Phil being cut at the end of the roll and damage, there is some damage right here. I'm not worried about it, I can stretch it out. But I want you to just remember this right here. Here's our seam. And this is that spot where I said, hey, I wanna put something, I want my seam flat. That's the most important thing. So let's pull this back and we'll kind of dissect this a little bit and we can uh, beat up on the fluorinate or some on his uh, ability to seam carpet. So do you see that right away? Right away? That's, uh, that's kind of what I was talking about. And so you can see here's that, that one spot. I'm not overly worried about that. I think I can power stretch that out. Uh, I believe I can. Worst case scenario is I guess I should bring some uh, latex tomorrow. I could put a little bit in there and stiffen that up. But you see how the seam, this is what we want. We want a nice flat seam. But you can see, you see these areas, guys? That's that's telling me the seam iron's getting pretty warm underneath there. Could have turned it down just a little bit more. But this area right here, you see where you got some, we just got a couple weird things going on there. And it's due to this, this damage right here. Then our seam comes down here. Here's where it meets our, our cross seam. And this is what I like about that XU90. Because even though that's overlapped, you really don't want to overlap your seam on top of the craft paper. That's why I wanted to leave that gap right there. I, I, you can just you can just feel it. You can it's just nice, nice, nice and tight. So here's what I wanted. To, I just wanted to show you here. 
So again, you know, you can see the tape's flat. That's that's the mo that's really, really important. Big thing, could have turned it down a little bit more, but that's another reason you want to use that, that seamer down now. It helps get some of that, get a lot of that heat out of there. This tape does not have to get that hot to melt. The XU90 is a great, great tape. So thanks for watching. Uh, any suggestions, comments, questions, you know, no hate. Uh, just uh, comment below. Thanks.